Having gotten a few months of medical school under my belt now, I can confidently say that there are some subjects that you have to know for the MCAT that come around like bad karma in med school, and glycolysis is one of them. Actually, all of cellular respiration is, but this video is going to focus on glycolysis, which is the first step in both anaerobic and aerobic respiration. You'll learn in med school all about the regulation of glycolysis and how it interacts with other metabolic pathways like gluconeogenesis, but for the MCAT, you have to focus on different things. The first is the purpose of glycolysis. Its point is to take the glucose in the foods that we eat and break it down into two molecules of pyruvate. This process does create a little bit of ATP, but mostly that pyruvate is shuttled into the citric acid cycle and then oxphos, and you get a lot of ATP out of that. If there's no oxygen to do aerobic respiration, then the pyruvate kind of gets shuttled into fermentation, and what little bit of ATP that we create from glycolysis is kind of all that we get. That's why aerobic respiration is just a lot more efficient. The next thing you need to know is the names of all the substrates throughout glycolysis, and yeah, I would know all of them. If you're in a time crunch, though, the ones that are surrounding the irreversible steps will probably suffice. I'd recommend knowing them all. So if you look at this image, you can see glucose goes to glucose 6-phosphate, which goes to fructose 6-phosphate, which goes to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which goes into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The dihydroxyacetone phosphate then gets converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and so now we have two molecules of G3-phosphate. From here on out, every reaction you see is done twice on both of those molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So they both get converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, then 2,3-phosphoglycerate, then to 2-phosphoglycerate, then 2-phosphoenolpyruvate, and finally to two molecules of pyruvate. The mnemonic I used for this is girls get fine food, gentlemen dine girls, boys prefer picking up pepperoni pizza. I kind of hate this one because there's so many substrates that start with the same letter and it doesn't really prompt you as to which one comes next, but it kind of got me started. I tried to also think about the reactions and even though I like couldn't name all of them for real, I kind of could say, okay, I'm at 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. I think it would be easier for me to pluck the phosphate off of the one carbon and turn it into 3-phosphoglycerate instead of like plucking it off and then changing it to 2-phosphoglycerate. So I kind of like was able to see how it made sense, the progression through the substrates. Remember that all of glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. In later steps, it will be converted into something that can be shuttled into the mitochondria for the citric acid cycle, but all of glycolysis is in the cytosol. So the important stuff is the irreversible steps and the enzymes that catalyze those irreversible steps. So here we see arrows in one direction for three different steps, denoting that it is irreversible. And of course, being irreversible just means that it is incredibly thermodynamically favorable in the forward direction only. So those irreversible steps are glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, which is catalyzed by hexokinase and does require an ATP. The next one is fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, catalyzed by phosphofructokinase, and that also requires ATP. The last one is the conversion from phosphoenolpyruvate to pyruvate, um, catalyzed by pyruvate kinase, and that creates ATP. Also note that 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate also creates ATP, so I would know it, but it is not irreversible. Okay, so to recap that, definitely know the irreversible steps, know the enzymes that catalyze those irreversible steps, and know whether it's creating or yielding ATP. So you'll notice that there were two steps we talked about in the beginning that used ATP, and then two steps in the end that created ATP. But remember, in the later stage, there are two molecules that are going through every one of those reactions, so really that's four ATP that we've created. So after creating four, but using two, the net yield of ATP from glycolysis is two ATP. That's really not a lot when you consider that if you go through the rest of aerobic respiration, you get like 30 something. Okay, some last minute things. You probably won't have to know these structures of any of the substrates in glycolysis, but I would, I mean, I would definitely know glucose for multiple reasons. Um, and it wouldn't hurt to also know pyruvate. Okay, I hope that cleared up glycolysis for you guys. There's a lot to know about glycolysis, but luckily for the MCAT, it's pretty skim on what you actually have to know. If you like this video, then you will love the new ebook that me and John have made. Um, we have not published it yet. 
I'm so sick of saying that. But when it is published, we will put it on the website and we will um, put the link down in the description below. It's basically an ebook that has all of the high yield material that's on the MCAT explained how me and John explained them in these videos. We really just break it down and you just skim the surface and get what you need to know for the MCAT. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.